This summer, it's all about love, love, love. But you don't have to wear tie-dye or listen to Joan Baez to get in on this summer of love. Love is at the heart of who God is and who God made us to be. Love shows up in different ways at different times and places. In the support of friends through good times and bad. In sharing goods and gifts with our communities. In appreciating the present moment and in setting aside time for rest and worship. Jesus shows us what a life of love looks like. So come, find your groove, and feel the love with us this summer. catchy beat, but the doctor said it shouldn't be. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> we uh, continue our Summer of Love series today. Today is our final, uh, for better or for worse, our final uh, Sunday in our Summer of Love series. And this morning we're kind of going to bring some things together and we're going to uh, wrap this Summer of Love series up with a nice bow and then send it out into the community, into the world where you are going to be representatives of God's love into the summer, the fall, the winter, the spring, and then the summer again. Let's begin with our greeting. Come to a deserted place and rest a while. We rest in God. Come to a deserted place and rest a while. We rest in the same with you. Come to a deserted place and rest a while. We rest in the redeemed. 
Amen. And we remember that our series, <clears throat> excuse me, is based upon the theme verse from 1 John 4, 8, that whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. I wonder what our world would look like if we, uh, especially followers of Jesus, took this phrase much more seriously than we do. I mean, if the world took it seriously, that's great. But guess who's going to tell the world to take this verse seriously? We are. So we need to take it seriously. Whoever does not love does not know God. Why? Because God is love. Let's begin and get into this uh, summer of love by putting a little bit of love in our hearts and by singing our familiar theme tune this morning. To think of others, to lend a helping hand, to put a little love in our hearts. And of course, by the way, is there any such thing as a little love? Love is love, right? And of course, we look at this and says, see, it's getting late. Oh, please don't hesitate. But we do hesitate. We do hesitate. We wait and wait and hesitate. But put a little love in our hearts and share that love with those around us, our friends, our family, our community. We share that love and surely and certainly it will make the world a better place because it transforms the hearts and minds of individuals, this love of God that we can share. And in doing so, it transforms the world and the world can be a better place. Thanks be to God that with love, because God is love, all things are possible. Our scripture this morning will be from uh, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, beginning at verse 23. If you'd like to put a marker in that spot in your Bibles, or if you'd like to bring up your app on your phone, or however uh, you uh, access scripture. Let us pray. God, as you so graciously allow us to find refuge in you, we thank you for your consistent and unconditional love for us. And now in gratitude, we return that love to you in one of many ways. We bring to you today our gifts of love and thanksgiving. May these be the first of many seeds we sow into your church and our community. In Christ we pray. Amen. Again, our scripture will be from Mark chapter 2, beginning in verse 23. This morning we're going to start with sort of a little bit of remembrance of what we talked about last week with Mary and Martha and that myth of productivity. Do you remember we, we talked about that a bit? That myth that you always have to have busyness and busyness. You always have to have something on your schedule. And it's almost a badge of honor that when somebody asks you, you say, oh, I'm just so busy. Just so busy. Why are we so busy? We have the choice for most things, right? Most things are up to us. I mean, certainly there are some things that may happen only once in a while, once in a year, once in a blue moon. But for the most part, even those things... Let's not give away the fact that we are the makers of the choices that we make, right? Even if it's a once in a lifetime event like an eclipse a couple of years ago, it is still our choice whether to travel somewhere to see it or to get out the telescope or to totally ignore it. It's still our choice to make. 
right? And so busyness comes down to the choices that we make. And we remember from our scripture, Martha and Mary, right? Martha had invited Jesus in and Martha was busy doing so many things, so many things. The scripture says that she was distracted. And Mary, it says, was sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to what he had to say. And Martha said, Jesus, I'm doing all the work and she's doing nothing. Tell her to help me. And Jesus responds, Martha, Martha. You are distracted. You are troubled, worried by so many things. There's only one thing that's needful. And Mary has chosen the better part. Mary has chosen the important thing. And I think it's important, by the way, that we understand this scripture because the myth of productivity that we always have to be doing something, we always have to be busy, and our calendars have to be full, even creeps its way into into our faith, believe it or not. And I say this because I've seen so many times, and in fact, just this last week, I read something that said that Martha and Mary were both doing appropriate things. They were both doing good things. That Martha was serving and Mary was listening and they were both equal and on the same keel. But that's not what scripture says. That's not what the story says. That's not what Jesus says. The scripture says that Martha was so busy doing everything she was doing that she was distracted. And Jesus even says in a loving way, Martha, Martha, you are distracted. Or another way to translate that would be troubled or worried by so many things. It's not necessarily bad to be doing things or to have things in your calendar or even to be busy, but to be continuously busy so much so that you forget the important things in life like Martha did. Martha was so busy that she almost, in fact, she may have even forgotten that Jesus was there and that maybe she should be listening too. And even in church, we get busy and caught up in all the things that we could do and all the things that can happen that sometimes we forget why we're doing it. We forget that Jesus is present with us now, has been, always will be. Sometimes we get caught up so much in the community that we forget that Jesus is in the community already. It's not like we are taking Jesus to the community. Jesus is already there saying, hey, come on and get working with me, serving and loving. But it's important that, again, this myth of productivity is something that we combat. This busyness, this perpetual filled calendar and schedule. It's important that we combat this and try to push back on it and to fight against this way of living because at its core, this idea that we are just about equal to what we do or how busy we are or how full our calendars are, this myth of productivity at its core says that our worth, our value, is measured upon how much we produce, how productive we are, how busy we are, what our schedules look like. That is how we measure our value and our worth. And to go even further, if this myth of productivity tries to tell us that time is money, then we are based, our worth and value, our measure is on how much time we're productive, how much money we get how much money we have. And this is a myth that has been perpetuated and introduced by the tempter, right? The evil one who seeks to take our time away from those most important things. The most <clears throat> important things in life. Because our worth and our value is not based on anything that we do or could do. Our worth and our value is not based upon how busy or how full our calendars are, how much we make or any of that. Our worth and our value is based simply on the fact that we are God's creation. That we are a friend of God. 
that we are brought in and included in God's family and that we are a part of God's great community in creation. God loves us because God loves us. Nothing that you could say or do, nothing you could earn, nothing that could make the world think that your value is higher or that you're worth more, nothing can change your value to God because God loves you just because God loves you. Now, let that sink in for a moment. God loves you simply because God loves you. What an amazing thing to think about. To give you maybe a, um, a more realistic way of understanding this, because sometimes when we talk about God loves you because God loves you and things like this, it seems so far maybe above our heads or abstract that we don't quite uh, think about it fully the way that we should. But here's an example. Sometimes in my family, we'll talk about silly things. Anybody who has kids or has been around kids, you know that silly things come up. One of the things that we have talked about and has come up randomly almost sometimes is uh, what would happen if, uh, you know, my hair was gone. It's, it's not right now. It's good. But what would happen if, you know, since my head was completely shaved, what if uh, I did that to Bethany? Or what if Naomi did that? Or what if Katie, uh, my wife, uh, shaved her head off, all of her hair? Right? Now, some people will look at that and say, well, that is silly. But here's, this is these moments or opportunities that I take to share with my family. I say, you know what? It wouldn't matter. Because Bethany and Naomi, I love your mother because I love your mother. Yes, I love her hair. But it wouldn't matter to me if her hair was pink if her hair was as long as Rapunzel's or if her hair was completely gone. I love her because I love her. Because I love her. This is the same sort of love that God has for us that is unconditional, that is beyond measure, that is unbound and unlimited by anything. God loves you because God loves you. So the question becomes, if our worth is based upon that and the world tells us something different, how do we fight back? How do we go back at the world and say, you're not going to tell me how much I'm worth. You're not going to get me sucked up into this myth of productivity that I have to be busy, busy, busy. And my calendar has to be full and overflowing and that I can wear that like some sort of badge of honor. How do we push back against that? How do we fight back against that tide of the world that that makes us think that our worth is caught up with who we are and how much we can do and how much we can produce and how much we have? And the answer to that we'll find in our scripture this morning. Again, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat. And he gave it to some of his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for humans, not the humans for Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And this is the word of God for the people of God. And we give thanks for this word because the answer to how we combat a world that wants us to be running around busy like chickens with their heads cut off, wants us to continue to flap our wings but never really get anywhere, the answer is Sabbath. The answer is to take time for rest and renewal and refreshment and reconnection with God. 
You see, if we love our friends like we talked about in the beginning, our first Sunday of Summer of Love was loving friends. How do you show your friends that you love them? This isn't rhetorical. How do you show your friends that you love them? You're kind to them? You talk to them? What's that? Do things for them? Spend time with them? You connect with them in some way, right? All right, after we talked about friends, we talked about the community. How, how do you show a community that you're in that you love them? Whether it's a community of a group of friends, a group of like-minded gardeners or woodworkers or the community you live in, how do you think you show the community that you love them? Food pantry. Food pantry? Provide clothing. Yeah, you reach out, you help the community, right? Take action. Take action. You connect with the community, right? What about your family? How do you show your family that you love them? Spend time with them. Tell them that. Tell them, yeah. How do you show God that you love God? Spend time with God. Connect with God. And how do you do that if you're running around so busy and flapping your wings not getting anywhere? Sabbath. You take time. Just like you would take time with your friends to connect with them. Just like you take time with the community to connect with them. Just like you take time with your family to connect with them. You take time with God to connect with God. And we call that Sabbath. And Sabbath is a gift from God. A gift from God to you. Jesus says so much here, right? Sabbath was made for humanity. For us, not us for it. Sabbath was made for us. Remember in the beginning, God created everything and on that seventh day God rested? I mean, how presumptuous is it of us that if we see God resting and the world doesn't fall apart, that we, the ones that God made, think that the world will fall apart if we don't rest? Because we have to be busy. Busy, busy, busy. Here's another question. What would you think if you offered a gift to somebody and they refused to take it? If I came to you and I said, here is this beautifully wrapped present, this gift I have given for you and you will love it. I know you will love it. I know that you will love it because I know that it's something you need. Somebody comes to you and says that. What are you going to do? Are you going to say, I'm sorry, I don't have time to accept this gift. <laughs> or imagine if you were the one giving the gift, how would you feel if the person on the other end said, I'm good. I'm too busy to unwrap this gift today. And yet that's what we do with this gift that God offers us of Sabbath. God has given this gift to us, for us to use. And yet so many times, so often, we refuse to open the gift and to use it. Why? Because we always say we don't have time. We're too busy. Too much on our plate. Too many irons in the fire. Whatever you want to say. You know, one of uh, former Bishop Will Willimon once said uh, in reference, he sometimes, if you don't know him, by the way, he sometimes says things that are really too honest. And he said one time, he said, you know what? When I hear people complain about being so busy and burnt out and stuff like that, you know what it really comes down to? They're complaining that they're just not good at time management. And, and another person, I don't know where this phrase come from, but they say that you make time for things you want to do. Right? If you want to ride your Harley through the countryside, you'll make time for it. Right? 
If you want to, to paint your house, you'll make time for it. Or maybe your spouse will make you make time for it. If you want to, to go to uh, the pool and take a swim, you'll make time for it. But when it comes to other things in life, whether it's uh, loving our friends, loving our community, loving our family, loving God with Sabbath, often just don't have the time for it. The Sabbath was made for us. It is a gift that God gives us. It's a time of reconnecting, of reflecting, of renewing, of refreshing, renourishing, re-enlivening everything. It's a time where we reorient our lives back to God. To realize that this week might have been so crazy or yesterday was so crazy, whatever it was. And this is a time for you to take and say, God, I need you to continue to show me where to go, what to do. God, I just want to tell you, I'm just going to complain to you today. Or God, you know what? I'm going to praise you today because I want to tell you about all the things that happened today that I know were only things that happened because you were at work. Sabbath is a time that we can share. It, it can be a time we share together or it can be a time unique to each of us. Sabbath can be a time of worship. It can be a time we spend in scripture. It can be a time that we share in service, in prayer. It can be a time even where we just walk through the woods. A time where we sit out on the patio. It's a time where we can spend doing something or not doing anything. But the main thing is that we're focusing on reconnecting with God. And this is a way that we show love to God. By reconnecting and saying, God, I want to be connected to you. I want a relationship with you. And I'm thankful and grateful for the gift that you've given me, the gift of the breathing of life into us, the gift of each breath I take, the, the gift of the beating of my heart, those things that we sometimes overlook. I wanna thank you, God, for the gift that I woke up this morning. I wanna give you thanks, God, because guess what? I had breakfast this morning and many people don't. How many of you had breakfast this morning and you thought while eating that breakfast, Thanks be to God that I have something to eat right now when many haven't eaten since this time yesterday or many others have gone more than a day without eating. Sabbath can look differently for each of us, but we have to, just like the church and just like everything else, we have to keep Sabbath protected. We have to set our boundaries and our limits up because the world will try to creep into Sabbath just as well. Because that thing that we spend on Sabbath, that thing that we think is our Sabbath time, all of a sudden it becomes, becomes too rigid and too strict and it becomes more about the thing and the keeping of the Sabbath than it is about God. Just like in our scripture, the Pharisees, oh, you can't, you can't just pluck those heads of grain off the wheat. That's work. You can't do that. It's unlawful. Or as they told Jesus later, you can't heal someone on the Sabbath. That's work. Or as they told others, you can't walk that far. You're only allowed to walk this far on the Sabbath because more than that is work. That becomes too legalistic. That becomes not about God. It becomes about following rules. And then it becomes about being productive about following those rules. And it comes to be that your Sabbath time and your time with God is measured by how good you're able to follow the rules and not by the fact that God just values you and loves you because God loves you and values you. So I suggest to you, how do we go about this Sabbath to combat the ways that the world tells us to always fill up our calendars and always have things blocked off? How do we uh, go about uh, keeping Sabbath time when the world wants us to be productive and wants us to be busy, busy, busy? Well, here's what I say. You know that saying, fight fire with fire? That's what I say. Here's what I say to do. And if you, if you aren't good at keeping Sabbath time, if you aren't good at keeping time of prayer or keeping a time of scripture reading, I say it's because the world has pressured us into being busy and having no time left for anything else. So here's what I say. We fight fire with fire, okay? And we, really, we shouldn't do that in, in general. But for this, it works. <laughs> Open your calendar on your phone or at home, your schedule, whatever it is, 
and put Sabbath time in there. Or put prayer in there. Put scripture reading in there. In fact, the first thing you could do if you want to is put Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, put worship at church in there. You can set an alarm for it. But when you do this, you're, you're, you're using the system against itself because you're saying, you know what? Okay, I'm going to block this time off. I'm not going to let anything else get in the way. And this is going to be my time with God. This is going to be the time where I say, God, thank you for this gift of Sabbath. Thank you for giving me this gift to reconnect with you, to be nourished by you, to be refreshed by you, to remember all that you have done and to take joy in this time. God, when the world is pressing down around us, pulling us this way and that, turning us every way but loose, we remember in this time of Sabbath that God, you are always there with us. Help us to never be too busy to share our love for you. Help us to never be too busy to share our love for our families. Help us to never be too busy to share our love with our friends and help us to never be too busy to share our love with the community around us. Because when it comes to love, if we do not love, we do not know God. And as he writes other places, as John writes, how is it that we can say that we love, we, we love God who we haven't seen when we don't love our brothers and sisters whom we have seen? And so friends, scripture says, when Jesus is talking about the greatest commandments, he says, love the Lord your God with all that you are. Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, friends, we've been talking about this summer of love for a reason. It's because love is at the forefront of God's greatest commands that Jesus talks to us about. Loving God and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. And the ways in which we can do that are to reconnect. To reconnect with others, whether it be through uh, a snail mail letter or an email letter or a text message, whether it be a simple phone call, whether it be going out to eat somewhere or just meeting up for coffee, whether it be just stopping by to say, hey, we reconnect, reconnect with our friends, our family, our community and God. And if we can do those things, then they all come together and strengthen our abilities to love God and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So thanks be to God for the gift of Sabbath. Whether you can do it as a 24 hour day or just an hour each day or 30 minutes each day, whatever you are able to do because our world encroaches on everything. But start where you can start and do what you can to spend that time with God, that Sabbath time of rest and renewal, of refreshment and reconnection, so that we can show our love for God, so that we can love ourselves through that reconnecting and rest, so that we can be not tired, but ready to go to love our neighbors. Thanks be to God that God gives us the gift of Sabbath, that God empowers us through the Holy Spirit, and that all things, as Jesus himself says, all things, the words of the prophets and the laws, the letters of the law, all of it depends on these two commandments, to love God and love your neighbor. So go forth family, friends, community of faith, 
Go forth and love God and love your neighbors. And don't forget to rest in God and love yourself. Amen. them in your prayers. Also, I'd like for you to add um, Jenny to keep her in your prayers. Jenny Hughes, who plays for the earlier service, she has um, <clears throat> she is dealing with some illness uh, today, so please keep her in your prayers. And again, I hope that everybody has been receiving our prayer connection that is uh, emailed out on Mondays. Uh, if you're unable to get the email, please let us know and we will uh, put that in the mail for you. But on that email, there are, <clears throat> there are several ways listed for you to add someone to our prayer list that can be put on there. And we also have our trusty slips of paper here that you can add someone to and put their name on here. And they will go on to our prayer list as well. Let us pray. Attentive God, we lift our voices to you, drawn by your steadfast love and confident in your great power to redeem. We pray for the church, for those in need, and for all of your creation. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we love. Bless your church to extend mercy to the outcast, kindness to the stranger, and forgiveness to the erring. In the name of Jesus, we Redeem your creation from the wilderness of sin and death, and bring us to the flourishing of righteousness and life. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we love. Restore justice with mercy and truth with trust in our nations and neighborhoods. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we love. Raise up those who cry from the depths of poverty, oppression, illness, and despair. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray and we love. Lord, help us to put away bitterness and wrath, anger and slander, and to be kind to one another, living in love as you have loved us. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we love. Let your love embrace those whom we now remember aloud with our voices or silently in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we love. Thank you for those who have gone before us, who ate your living bread and drank of your living water, and who now live with you forever in the company of saints. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we love. Nourishing God to you, we commit our prayers. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is the bread of life and the living water, and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We now have a hymn, number 452, My Faith Looks Up to Thee.
time of generosity where, again, we give thanks for God's generosity to us, right? Those things that are so big, many of you would say that you have experienced something miraculous in your life, and you would give God the thanks and praise for that. But let's also remember the generosity of God in those small things, right? The small things like the fact that you're sitting here today, that you are breathing as we speak, the fact that we can see or hear or whatever else it is, our heartbeats, the way our body works, the blood pulsing through our veins. Let's give God the thanks also for the generosity and the way that we have been created and that God loves us because God loves us. We give thanks for God empowering us to be generous and others to uh, be generous to us so that we are recipients of it as well. And the ways that we do that, we see many ways that we can offer generosity. One of them is our uh, giving tree over here, which uh, is decorated with various ornaments. And they're all monetary donations uh, because they're all going towards the emergency fund for the recovery center. Um, because sometimes uh, when someone comes in and they're seeking to be in recovery, they're seeking to make a better life for themselves, they have to leave everything behind. And when that happens, there are things that they need. And so uh, this funding goes to the Recovery Center to help those individuals as they transition into recovery. We also have opportunities coming up where people will uh, be uh, sharing generosity uh, with us in different ways, right? So we have the um, food pantry, of course, they, they distributed yesterday on the 7th and they will distribute again on the 21st from 8 o'clock to 9.30. And I just want to invite you out if, uh, to, to be a part of it, um, to do something, to assist in the distribution, or honestly, if you've never been there before, just to come out and see how it works. And I say that because, um, so Friday was Katie and I's anniversary, and Ken and Nancy uh, watched the girls for us. So, thank you. Um, and so Saturday morning, both Katie and I were able to go to the food pantry. And this was Katie's first time being able to go. And she was just completely amazed at uh, how, how wonderful that ministry goes and how many people are there to help and how many people are helped. And she was really just amazed at uh, everything that happens there. And so uh, I would suggest, I'm, I'm sure it would be okay with Jim, uh, for you to, one Saturday we have a distribution to come out and assist and help, but if not, just to come out and pray and to see the amazing work that's done there. As Jim might call it, the organized chaos, right Jim? Is that what you called it? It's very organized chaos, very organized. Um, but yeah, just take a look, just come out and take a look because it is an amazing operation. We also have coming up on the 22nd at 5.30 at the food pantry, I mean at the uh, Sinclair House, we're going to have an ice cream social where people will uh, generously offer some wonderful homemade ice creams, but also uh, some store-bought ice creams probably, and I would guess maybe some other treats, I'm not sure. Um, but you can come on out, you don't have to bring ice cream, you're welcome to if you want to. But you don't have to bring anything except for your appetite for ice cream and maybe if you have a special ice cream spoon, I guess. But, uh, you know, just come on out and enjoy. Um, also on the 29th, which is the last Sunday of the month, uh, between our services, so 945 and 1045 over in the Sinclair House, uh, they're going to be, the T. Roy Phillips Sunday School class is going to be generously serving breakfast, cooking and serving breakfast to anyone who comes to show up to have a wonderful meal and to enjoy some wonderful fellowship time. So uh, we invite you to be a part of that. Again, that's the 29th uh, in between our services. And so these are all the ways in which uh, generosity is out and about and flourishing. Uh, and we are the recipients of it, and we are the offerers of it, but it's all because God was first generous to us. And so we return all of this that we've talked about and those things that still are yet to happen and the things in which uh, we, we don't even think about sometimes. We return it all to God to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for loving us just because you love us. And thank you, God, for being so generous to us. We return it to God and ask for a blessing of multiplication and to um, work so that others can know this great love and generosity. We do that through praise and prayer.
thanks for all things. We give you thanks for all those things that we take note of, the miraculous in our lives and those joyous times where we know that you are at work. And Lord, we give thanks to you for all those things that sometimes we too easily overlook that we take for granted, but yet are due to your grand generosity and love. We give you thanks for the gift of Sabbath. We give you thanks for the opportunity to give back through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the generosity of the breath that we take as we pray this prayer. And we ask for you to bless it, to multiply it, so that we can go out into this community and along with you breathe life and love into the community and the world around us. So that all folks might come to know you, your generosity and your great love, the gifts that you offer. So that more disciples might be made and this world might be transformed. So that we might come to see more clearly your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. sermon series called Tossing and Turning, where we seek to address and speak to four things that often cause us to toss and turn at night, to not get a good night's rest. We're going to talk about fears, the future, finances, and the anxiety that comes with simply having to make choices. Join us this Sunday as we begin our new series, Tossing and Turning, and talk about fears how they keep us up at night, and what we can do to find peace 
and rest. Thank you.